So th there's so many ways to do this operation, um, but we're just going to do a sickest way, which is largely developed by Glenn. Um, so we tend to cannulate the duct, the arterial duct, and then single venous cannulation. Many centers um, put a um, gothic tube graft to the innominate artery and pop it that way. Uh, that's a good way to do it. Um, I don't think anyone does uh, bicava cannulation. It's uh, uh, pretty standard to have a single venous cannulation and um, cool down to um, <coughs> 18 degree. Uh, that takes about 20 minutes. Uh, in the meanwhile, um, right after you go and bypass, there's two ways to control the duct. So either um, ligating the very proximal part of the duct, which is here, or um, snare the bilateral uh, branch piece. So that's depending on where you can get the duct. Um, so that's the ascending aorta. So I usually mark the right coronary around the takeoff. And um, this is the promayati, and that's the sinusoidal junction. That's the right PA. So um, I usually dissect it about here and then uh, try to can it as distal as we can. Um, but distal uh, duct uh, cannulation can be very difficult and sometimes it rupture the duct. So you need some, some sort of balance. Anyway, so let's say we can it here. Um, then we have to look at the uh, uh, branches. So the left PA comes up underneath the, the duct. So let's say you have, um, um, let's say we are going bypass. So here, um, okay. make sure you're not causing the LPS stenosis. So that, um, that is very important for this um, hyperplastic variant. So for the left side, it's slightly higher than the right side. And uh, so that's uh, true for the transposition and true for the intrapterioid catch. So those are the um, uh, subgroup that you can get uh, ductal um, or LPS stenosis by ligating the duct. So that's done here. Um, I find that almost always th there's no <coughs> enough room to divide in this point. So if, if you don't have a room, let's say you, you have to can it very proximal, in that case you can uh, snare both PA, mm -hmm. completely snare down while cooling. Um, let's say so um, it's cooled and then the next thing you have to think about is where to where to put the cardiopegia. <coughs> and um, so that's um, very difficult. So um, in the ductal cannulation, so there's a couple ways to do it. So I tend to uh, find the isthmus, which is right here. If it's big enough, you can talk uh, the isthmus, and then I uh, give the cardiopegia retrograde. So the way you do it in the snare both, uh, snare all neck vessels, and then clamp the descending aorta, then um, um, uh, deliver the cardiopegia retrograde into the ascending aorta. If you have a, um, so you can do the same thing through the arterial cannula in the duct, um, or if you uh, add a small cortex, you can go through the cortex. But you have to give a uh, larger dose, like you know, 35, because um, you have some tubing uh, portion. Anyway, let's say um, um, you can also use this transverse arch, which is uh, oftentimes bigger than the ascending aorta, which is true in this case as well. So it is, this is much bigger than the ascending aorta. So cannulating the ascending aorta with the cardiopegia needle is dangerous. You, know, you can easily cause dissection, and then you can't really fix it. So uh, you can cannulate here, which is pretty safe, and then that's going to be the part of the suture line uh, at the time of reconstruction. <laughs> Um, so you can do that. So let's say you have a rest of the heart and then uh, uh, circuit of rest. The first thing we do is to the septectomy. So that's the IVC 
and um, so that's a trick as well. So what you want to look at is coronary sinus, probably somewhere around here. So what's Im why it's important is that you can easily cause a complete heart block if you go to anterior. We, we, we've seen that bef before. So what you want to do is to um, keep this. So this ASD is actually quite big um, compared to some of the other hyperplasts. Stay posterior and uh, stay on. Um, this is uh, um, the anterior end of the fossa, so stay within the fossa. And um, usually, this is our practice that, um, so let's say this is a theoretical coronary sinus. We <coughs> sort of um, partially undo the coronary sinus. So coronary sinus is a vein, so by definition you don't have any conduction. So then that's okay. Um, if you go this way, here, this corner, you can easily get outside of the heart and uh, you have massive bleeding after. So um, our practice, so when we've done the <coughs> septec uh, septectomy, we can put a um, um, drop in sucker and then run the um, sort of a sucker bypass. Um, we just seen the, the surgeon from Texas presenting the Norwood. He actually make a um, larger pursing on the right atrium here and then do the septectomy through there and then uh, put back the um, venous cannula and then he can run, you know, it's, it's not, not suction bypass, the proper partial bypass. But usually the right atrium right up and is quite big so um, we frequently tie this tip uh, for the sake of this, we're just going to put it um, this, um, but this this is uh, actually helps to expose the whole great vessels in an ascending aorta. It's also true that during the <coughs> uh, cooling, you can divide the PA. Um, it has been a practice that we actually do this with circuit of rest, but in the setting of aortic atresia, you're not going to suck the air. Um, even the aortic stenosis, if you're careful, you're not going to suck the air, so you can divide that safely. <coughs> right angle instrument like this, um, so that you can see. So what you want to see is the top of the <coughs> well, sinusoidal junction and then the base of the right PA. The right PA comes off much, um, so before the LPA, which is much higher. So just like you're doing switch, so you uh, you want to have an imaginary line just between the sinusoidal junction and then the base of the right uh, right promyati. So um, which is around here, my mind. So cut it there. So cut um, just enough to look down. And what you want to see is the top of the commissure, which is here. We are away from the top of the commissure. So this is going to be a neo-aortic valve, so that's be very important. And then look down on the origin of the right PA. So we are away, quite away from both of the structures. And uh, go ahead and divide. So make sure you, your assistant and then, um, yourself have an equal tension. So if somebody is putting more than the other, then, then you have a very unequal. Um, yeah, and then so here, um, because LPA uh, is higher, and then also you want to have this portion to be um, going up on the arch, uh, we cut slightly oblique. That's that, and uh, we're away from the commissure, and um, that's good. And then, so you see this redundant tissue we're gonna resect um, later on. And um, let's <coughs> so let's say we um, so we like get here. So we're gonna cut this, <coughs> and so this part is not this easy because <laughs> you, you really have a um, uh, recurrent nerve to protect. So the way we dissect this is very key, which is, 
So you can start with here, ascending delta all the way anterior to get the um, isthmus. Right? So this is the isthmus. By definition, from here to there, there's no uh, recurrent nerve because it's all anterior and superior to the recurrent nerve. The recurrent nerve should be, <coughs> so here, um, so that's there, right? So recurrent nerve should be so below the isthmus, somewhere around here. So once you divide them, you can pull this and then um, uh, get into the plane. And then um, then you're going to start seeing the intercostal branches. So you, you should at least see three sets of intercostal um, <coughs> branches. <coughs> and then your instrument to dissect should feel the spine. That's how deep you have to go to get all mobility. <coughs> And then in some point, when you identify the uh, recurrent nerve, you can go ahead and then divide this isthmus like that. And then, um, then you can get this uh, um, some sort of a um, instrument, um, and an assistant can grab here so that there's no bleeding, and then you can pull really hard to get it done. Um, so for the sake of time, so the um, ductile tissue is all uh, around here. So you don't want to cut here because it's still ductile tissue. So where you want to cut is about a few millimeter below this, like that. <coughs> and it's nice to get like one clean cut, then there's no ductile tissue, but you may have to recut if there's more ductile tissue. And then this is all duct, so that's all gone. And um, then you have this free up ascending aorta. This um, segment of operation, you really want to do it with a circuit arrest because um, the cannula will be on the way. Um, and uh, here we start with uh, pure lesser curvature right here. All the way. So this is very typical hypoplasia. You see the larger transverse arch compared to the ascending aorta. So once you get the corner, so I usually cut from the uh, just pure right side of the patient and then, um, and then I start cutting from the right shoulder of the patient. That gives you a better angle. And uh, slightly, so here this is pure lesser curvature, but as you go down to the ascending aorta, you want to go slightly anterior to make a DKS on a small is a little easier. <coughs> and again, because this is usually less than two millimeter structure, just pay attention to your pick up tension, both yourself and an um, assistant. It's very easy to make it oblique if somebody's putting more tension than the other. Okay, so you can see the the right coronary, left coronary. Left coronary is very hard to see because it usually is behind the <coughs> PA, but the right coronary you can clearly see. Uh, that's why you want to mark it before you go on bypass. You know, when you arrest the heart, it's, it's um, less obvious. <coughs> and then uh, you have an imaginary sort of ST junction around there, right? And uh, frequently, left coronary artery comes off higher than the right coronary, so you don't want to go too uh, too low. There we go. So and then uh, I think we're still too low today, so we're just gonna can grab yeah, it's a little more anterior. the PA. So PA is here. And then we just have to see how deep we want to go. And then uh, so the, um, the PA comes here. So maybe a little bit more from here to there and then you can cut a little bit here, right? So you can see the imaginary uh, line of DKS and osmosis. So that's 
put corresponding to here. So, and then so that's probably enough, and then um, um, high enough so that you're not going to compromise the coronary orifice. And um, then we had to decide uh, where you're going to cut on the PA. Now the reference uh, should be this commissure between so sort of a uh, right posterior commissure. And um, sometimes this goes anterior, sometimes it goes posterior. You really have to decide. So this one looks like it's going to go anterior to the commissure. And uh, can relax first. So, yeah. So you don't need to go too much. There we go. So now I have something like that. Yeah. So as I said, there's so many ways to do it. <coughs> um, I know the Melbourne group uh, transect ascending aorta, and then we hook up to the reconstructed um, um, reconstructed arch. And um, the the one that we saw um, that takes a surgeon, he he doesn't make this incision at all. He just hook up to here. So it's kind of interesting. So. So I usually start from the bottom of this uh, uh, TKS. So here is to be very careful. So usually I put it just like uh, doing the coronary on the switch. I just uh, spread with the uh, pickups and make sure it's uh, in the lumen. And uh, so make this uh, half and a half. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not greased. It's not? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can grab here. There you go. <coughs> can you still see it on the monitor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I'll try to do it like one by that because it's usually it's lined up nicely. So obviously it's important to have a full thickness and then um, adventition both sides, it's, it tends to bleed here. Uh, but also um, you don't want to get too much tissue from the ascending aorta, it's going to kink. So when you get to the top, so I usually go out here, um, and because we have so much sutures at the end, we we'll try to eliminate this. So I usually get this uh, sort of a relevant tissue or stitch here, and then tie it and then cut so that you don't have too many stitches. So here, like, tie this. Short. You should use a silk. Yeah, exactly. It's okay. Should be enough, eh? Okay. That's a lot of pain. This stitch, I uh, usually go. Um, <coughs> Backhand, just to give us a, a better angle. It's the same stitch as a uh, sort of a, a corner of a right coronary implantation in a switch. It's, uh, it's very similar. Um, okay, am I right? Mm, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I should have gone. Sorry. Yeah. 
Ну да. the greatest angle, sorry. <laughs> okay. But this operation, um, I operate from the patient right shoulder a lot because this gives mm -hmm. a better, better angle compared to just sitting here. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Perfect. So that's a good trick. Small, <laughs> short. That's okay. Still gives us the. So um, I forgot to mention, but um, um, I usually start the. Uh, um, anti-grade cerebral perfusion when we are when we happy with those uh, V-shaped incision then you have access to the innominate artery from inside and then you can put the poise down there before I start the DKS anastomosis because during the DKS uh, um, you don't need to be circuit arrest really mm. so you can perfuse the brain <coughs> But um, many surgeons, like you know, Dr. Spray, for example, he he does everything with a circuit arrest. But you have to go fast, right? <coughs> okay. So that should be good. Okay, so that's pretty good. Here, uh, what we do here is um, uh, interdigitating <coughs> um, anastomosis. <coughs> Uh, what that means is, so um, you want to um, <coughs> enlarge this, uh, the end of the aortic cut in two sides. So one is this back wall, and the other one sort of uh, here. Okay, let's do this first. So this is pure posterior aspect. So in the real world, you don't need. To, you probably don't don't need to cut this tip. I just making it easier. And uh, this. So, <coughs> so this anastomosis or this part of the anastomosis actually bleed the most. I don't know why. So I try so many different ways, but still bleed. Um, so so this is. Okay, that's here, the bottom. This is hard, eh? Yeah. <laughs> the table is uh, kind of interesting. Okay, there we go. There we go. <coughs> okay. One shot. It will get better. Alright, so... Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay. So maybe... Can grab here, maybe? Mm -hmm. There we go, thank you. Can you see at the monitor? Yeah. Okay. So 
So because of the bleeding risk, you don't want to advance too much on here. So I usually do this operation uh, or archery construction with a um, little tilt towards me. Actually, you can do it. Yeah. Do you want it? Yeah. And this is it. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah. So obviously, um, your head down, right? Because it's so good of risk, risk of uh, air in the brain. And then uh, if you tilt it, yeah, this is much better. You can go head down too if you like. No, I'm okay. <laughs> and um, yeah. And then uh, okay. Uh, so I just saw to the top of this uh, incision and then come out. So um, so this one obviously the suture, the hanging, but um, I don't usually tie this because it's the other suture comes up from the bottom of the uh, descending aorta and then you want to use the longer one, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute, but uh, you, you have to have a choice of using a longer suture. There you go. And then, where is it? Right there. Oof. Okay, so this is a first part of the interdigitating, <coughs> and here comes the biggest debate part. So <coughs> I'm still debating. So we we tend to cut. So this is second incision of the interdigitating. So many surgeons cut it here, opposite side of this, you know, 180 degree from the first incision. Mm -hmm. So we um, we have been doing is more towards sort of a lateral because it's uh, easier to uh, reconstruct. So I'll do this way today but um, there's a uh, room for argument. There. And then uh, you definitely want to cut this this side of the, the okay so something like that right? And then, uh, so from here to here, we had to fill here to here, I had to fill with a patch. So usually, we use um, um, left PA, like bisector left PA, which comes like that, and then I j we just cut it. Um, we cut in a way that, so this is LPA, so I usually, um, Let's see, yeah, cut this 
kind of this corner so that we have more redundancy on this side. Again, this is the inside. So that's based on the way we cut it here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we cutting, so let's go back to. Um, <coughs> so if you cut in here, like the opposite side of this, this part should be completely equal because you're fitting the exact mm -hmm. same shape. Because we are cutting more lateral, right? Mm -hmm. So this portion has to go all like wrap all the way around to get here. So that's why this part is somewhat unequal. Okay, let's see. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just kinda cut it uh, sort of in this angle. But still, oops, can you see it? So still, <coughs> so this is the inside, right? So this, this is going to be a super aspect. And, um, and then, I just roughly look at <coughs> this time. You see this, this corner? Can you see it on the monitor? Mm. Yeah. So this corner is the longest dimension, like a circumferential dimension you had to fill. Like that, right? Mm. So, <coughs> so why we're doing this is that you don't want to make this too big. So that's the worst thing we can do and then there's no space for the LPA. And that's a setup for LPA stenosis in the future. So something like this. Mm. So, and uh, roughly speaking, so we're looking at, let's go somewhere around that. Right? Mm -hmm. So, let's see here. So it's kind of bulged like that, and then, um, so this one's kind of more um, room there, mm. and this one's more straight. So that's how we, uh, that's how I make it anyway. And this, and then, uh, so this is, you know, I, I do it from inside because it's conceptually makes more sense to me. But uh, actual sewing, you have to flip it, right? Because that's gonna go to the super end. Mm. That's gonna go to the. Okay, so we don't need this much. So let's cut it so that. So let's cut it there. Let's start two or three stitches from the toe. And go around the toe with um, mm -hmm. it's maybe too wide, but let's see. Here another um, risky area that you have significant bleeding, so um, just don't advance too much. You don't want to be too robust here. But at the same time, for the patch, you you have to have you have to advance, right? Because you don't want to stuck in the same position, so that you're not gonna mm. be able to enlarge this area. So it's a fine line between enlarging. Uh, and at the same time, avoiding significant bleeding. So usually, uh, three and a half or four and a half stitches, and then you're ready to take it down. Okay. Let's take it down. It's maybe too, uh, too wide, huh? Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this a little bit because that's what we we agree upon. Just a little bit. Okay, and then. Uh, 
keeps going here. If I pass the toe and uh, we're just gonna switch to forehand, that's easier. So the first four or five stitches key in terms of uh, uh, enlargement, avoiding a bleeding, and then after that it gets much easier. So you have to uh, make time here. <coughs> so one of the key components of a uh, Norwood arch reconstruction is that you don't want to do it in exact the same speed all, all the way. Um, so a uh, portion like the DKS and then these four stitches, you have to slow down a bit because you want to be accurate. But here it's easy and then, um, you have to make time here, otherwise it takes forever. You can see the last stitch here, so that's where we're gonna go to and um, tie. That's gonna bleed, but it's okay. <laughs> and then this corner because it's you know three tissues match together right the um native uh, proximal aortic arch descending of the end patch is tend to bleed so um you know some surgeon put extra extra stitches here <coughs> they usually put very um like narrow stitches but you know um once you're done with the arch reconstruction those area has to be watched first for the bleeding. So this is what I mean. So one, so we got this, and then uh, I just compare two sutures, and then leave the longer one, because the, the rest of the suture line is very long, and then you don't want to um, unnecessarily add more sutures. So <coughs> go ahead and tie, and then I will cut one side. <coughs> one so here this is by far the, the uh, biggest area of bleeding so I usually go back mm -hmm. like almost redundant mm -hmm. and uh, usually if you look at the advancement on the patch usually it's you know advanced quite a bit so I usually go back both sides fill the gap otherwise it's exsanguinate With, with all the effort it still bleeds. I don't know why. Okay. <coughs> so here, and so I'm just sewing. So until we got this area, we we don't we don't need to worry too much about it. Just keep sewing. So what's gonna happen is um, the idea is. Yeah, mm. So this one's gonna be here, and then this gonna wrap around mm. like that, right, and this portion's gonna reach this area. Mm. You need a music. <laughs> Mike, Mike, you can sing. Mike, yeah. no. Roger, I'll organize it for next time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 <laugh
So I'm just gonna, just gonna go real quick for the sake of time. Because I don't want you, you guys to fall asleep. That looks great. Um. <laughs> it's not jazz though. <laughs> <laughs> So when you get here, sometimes it's easier to sew from inside. So I'll show you uh, what I mean. So if you put this uh, graph this way, yeah. So sometimes it's easier from inside like this. Mm -hmm. So I'll do that. Um, so it's it's a no difference between you know sewing from outside and inside. So you really have to decide. Especially those uh, three-dimensional patching, you really have to look into that all the time. So I usually use, uh, I tend to use this technique when I have to do a distal right PA reconstruction too. Mm. The same thing. Go. Cool. That doesn't kink. Mm. Where are we? Just no, it's quite right here. Yeah. I still have to do something. Mm. Gonna be okay. Yeah. I hope so. So as you can see this side, so this suture gets <coughs> very short, so <coughs> and if you keep this other one, you have opportunity to use the longer piece. So that's the descending aorta, and then uh, you see how this uh, wrap has wrap around from here. That's mm -hmm. the toe, all the way around here to fill this gap, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have opportunity. So if this one is too wide, <coughs> you can trim it. One second. So okay, so I can go here. Mm -hmm. Can you see it there? Yeah. So this is how. So this one just perfect, see that? Right here. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to do anything until the end of this. Good. So I'm outside, I'm just gonna go in. Okay. So the reason why you wanna look at this is that this one makes, if this one's too wide, then that's going to be too big here mm. for the rest of the curvature, so that's going to push on an LPA. So you always want to look at the opportunity to cut it smaller whenever possible. The other very important tweak 
on this uh, arch sutra is that so when I get the patch so I usually hover the suture, so a needle, mm. so way far away from the actual point and then uh, kind of mm. um, pull back. Mm. So that movement does actually gives you adventitia mm. incorporated mm. into the arch um, suture line. Mm. So that's very important because otherwise the adventitia tend to be retracted, <coughs> right? So I just pass that and then pull back mm -hmm. and uh, find the best spot to get out. Okay. So, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> and then uh, I think this one's a little too, uh, see that? Mm -hmm. It's too wide. <coughs> So almost reaching to the first critical point that you had to trim the patch. So just get to the. So we're, we're trying to get to this corner between the aorta arch and the ascending aorta. So that's the end of the aortic arch, and you can see this is very important. So, so far the aortic arch is completely unobstructed here. You can put the head out like you know five, six millimeter, make sure you're happy. Uh, then <coughs> this is your um, DKS. DKS, and um, okay, hopefully this is big enough. Yeah, should be. Okay, so here, this is a straight line. So that's how you have to cut it here. So like that, huh? point so <coughs> I usually want to stand where I can sew the suture line towards me so I, now I'm sitting <coughs> standing sort of a patient right foot so that's usually stabilize your hands best <coughs> it on the video. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe no. <laughs> sorry. Okay. No, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Can uh, you see it now? Yeah. Yeah. So nobody just let me know. It was just that moment. I'm sure it's 
Mm. Okay. Mm. So his hand too big, that's what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. Very delicate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now it's coming into very diminutive ascending aorta, so you don't want to take too uh, deep bite, right? Because that's going to kink this ascending aorta. Uh, because you're putting relatively shallow stitch, getting out of tissue is very important, right? So just kind of mm. from scratching the posterior wall mm. and then come back so mm. that you have not too big bite, but you have uh, st uh, strength by having out of tissue. Again, uh, almost coming to this uh, intersection between the DKS and an archery construction suture line. So, uh, again, many surgeons put an additional stitch here, like a triangle stitch. Um, Now um, this comes another um, point, so it's going to be like this, right? Mm -hmm. And um, this is going to come to here, and then that's going to wrap around. So as I said, this portion, this left side of the portion is slightly longer, right? Mm -hmm. So, and um, also remember that some of some surgeons actually bring this to here mm. without patching, so this one can go very high. Um, and then um, so that that you know uh, taking into account. So what I usually do is push the uh, um, patch back, and uh, you also have to look at here, and then. Um, almost going backwards like that so from here so this is a corner and uh, you want to come sort of uh, here so that's gonna compensate see so that's how slay probably that might be too much mm. okay, a little too much but uh, it's it's yeah, maybe see how yeah see how it's try to kink right mm. so yeah I think that's that's, that's okay <coughs> so it's probably easier with um, like a uh, you know biomaterial like homograft like that right? mm. okay so we don't need this part. Um, Now you kind of um, start to get an idea of final shape. So this portion is going to be your, um, you know, uh, anterior wrap. See, mm -hmm. this this is how it's going to lay, and then the, this portion is going to be the longest because that that mm -hmm. this has to reach here. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm almost cutting too short there, but uh, that should be just okay, right? Yeah. <coughs> This uh, can you still see it? Yep.
pear. <laughs> Failed exam. Still have a couple of tissue for pleasure. <laughs> Help me, that's. That's true, it's fault. Yeah, I think so. Building <laughs> <laughs> too much. Too. <laughs> No, but it is true that... Can you still see it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, the home graft is very fragile, right? Mm. So, it is true that it's, it tears quite easy. So, what you want to avoid is that um, talking, right? So, you don't want to really talk the needle. And then always rotate the needle as you come out from the tissue. So I usually saw to this end of this uh, V shape. Okay. I think we can finish that here. Yeah. Okay. So we're almost done, believe it or not. <laughs> and then, so here's the opportunity, so I think it's going to be very good, so you can see inside, so this is going to be pressurized, yeah, pressurized, so this should be okay, and then um, this, this uh, curvature w is not too big. Mm. Now, um, here's the opportunity, so that's going to be, as I said, it's going to be all around here. And probably it's around here. Mm -hmm. And then you can decide. So I usually try to cut this a little bit, mm -hmm. but not too much because that may narrow this dimension. So I think it's pretty good though. Yeah. I think it's pretty good. So maybe just cut. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, we we'll still cool to 18, still so that's how a, you know, controversy, but, you know, um, in our strategy, mm -hmm. th the lower body have a pretty long ischemic time, mm -hmm. so I think it's, you know, um, reasonable to cool. Now, some centers, you see a uh, sort of bigger polystyrene, mm -hmm. and then uh, perhaps you see a uh, descending aorta, mm -hmm. so that you, you can, you know, come up to almost full flow. Mm -hmm. um, we can do that, we don't, we haven't, but, so now, okay, so that's mm -hmm. almost there, right? Mm -hmm. so yeah, so, so here, so that's kind of bulge, that's kind of bulge, so that's very nice, mm -hmm. can you see it? Yeah. Inside? Yeah. So that should be complete and obstructed, not too big. The final step is to look at so this dimension is very critical because this one is going to wrap around here, mm -hmm. right? So mm. that's almost, can I have a some marking pen? So that should be 
somewhere around here mm. okay. and uh, you can, can mm. cut around so this one you can and trim cut. it later <coughs> yeah but this one this one for ro rotate a lot of it huh mm. Mm. so I will say just one second so I'm just so if I use this That'll be okay, actually. So this okay. one's will stand up. And then you have a British. And then it too too wide, I think. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna go with this, so let's see. Yeah, so somewhere around that. Then okay. Marking pen. Yeah. So I'm thinking here. Mm -hmm. So I go this way, go this way. <coughs> so, so far so good, but you can easily mess up with this final cut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So that that's why I I mean because um, I guess if you if you done like three hundred no good probably you don't need to cut uh, um, little by little but um, it's it's safer to cut one uh, incision at a time so that you can still have some recovery. is little long but I think we should do this is good too as well. I think it's good. Yeah. yeah. You can still so, uh, on the pressure there so you yeah. can just a little bit uh, sharp angle. I agree, I agree. Oops. Oops. There's this is the floor. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just put <laughs> pick it up and put it back on the table <laughs> without doing anything. So the other thing is um, when I'm doing this kind of a rapid two byte, mm -hmm. so you really have to decide whether in which is more efficient to try to do a one byte post uh, tissue versus rapid two bytes, depending on the angle and an exposure. Are you are you still uh, perfusing anti-gray? Yeah, perfusing? still yeah. Okay. So. Oh wait, um, no, I think, so, so by the mid portion of this, I usually yeah. stop it. Okay. Good point. And then, when do you rewarm? Oh yeah. After, after, um, make a whole one hour. Yeah. So that's right, so... Okay, so it's a little Oops. different from what we anticipated. And then, so the final thing is, you don't want to cut this too short. What happens is, so yeah. if it's too short, that's going to collapse here. Yeah. 
doesn't have enough uh, caliber, so you wanna have sort of a little redundant, not too much. Just stay here. Something like that, right? Yeah. <coughs> This is long enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looks good. <coughs> so now at this point, I usually make a hole in uh, the. Um, I guess we don't do that part. Okay, but just to, just now. So here, you can look up the from my bar. Can you see it? And then uh, pass the right angle through it. Uh, just like Ross operation, you know, it's the valve goes very low, and then you wanna you wanna have an extra sort of a millimeter or two, then make an incision here, so that's you know that you're not gonna injure. Um, and uh, we use that um, dunk technique. Okay. All right. So. So if you uh, you cut the patch out at the end, I guess you have a template. Sure. I have no idea how the patch shape will be. Take that. Maybe some, uh, yeah, I agree. That's a good idea. Proportions. Yeah. So I'm sewing from this side because the other side uh, gets too short. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously it's easier to sew from that side towards you. Yes. Is my hand on the way? No. no. no? Okay. So obviously this is a bulging part. So usually the patch is more uh, redundant. You have you have to make up by advancing the patch and then come back a little bit on the native tissue, right? Mm -hmm. So that one's applied to all patching, like you know tetralogy when you do a main PA patch, mm -hmm. uh, last bit of suture line you really have to advance on the patch. Otherwise you don't have any bulging. Put a put a graft uh, inside of the RV inside, uh, to uh, prevent stenosis. The push in there and tie. Okay, so that's it. So, so the things to look for, <coughs> obviously. So this has to bar so th that's how pressurized. Uh, that's not too bad. And uh, yeah. It, it can kink here, right? And um, yeah, that's it. See how this almost circumferential? Mm, yeah, this is why these uh, the first.